Hi everyone, we have defined the dot product and explored a geometric description out of which pops a lovely formula. Today we'll directly find the angle between any two given vectors. We'll begin by rearranging our geometric formula to isolate the angle between the vectors. The best way to nail this content is through plenty of examples, so we'll round the video off just like that. I hope you've immediately recognised that we've already been talking about the angle between two vectors in the context of the dot product. In this formula for the dot product, we defined theta as the angle between vectors a and b. If we make theta the subject of this formula, we will have an explicit formula which tells us what the angle between two given vectors is. How do we do this? You can first divide by this quantity here. We can assume that this will not be zero because that would mean either a or b has a magnitude of zero and we're not interested in that case. We have cos theta on its own, so to go one step further, we can take the inverse cosine. And now theta is isolated. That's what we were after, an explicit formula for the angle between two vectors. This formula tells us that the angle between two vectors is dependent on the dot product between the vectors and the magnitude of the vectors. But this isn't really another formula that you have to lock away in your memory. Knowing the original formula should be enough to be able to rearrange to our new formula. The best way to see just how useful this formula can be is through some examples. The first one is as straightforward as it comes. We're given two vectors, a and b. They'll look like this on our plane. If we want the angle between them, we need their magnitude and their dot product. The dot products between a and b can be found using the definition. It's just 1 times 2 plus 4 times 3, 14. The magnitude of a will be given like this, which simplifies to the square root of 17. Similarly, the magnitude of b is the square root of 4 plus 9, the square root of 13. We have everything we need for our formula, so it's a matter of simple substitution. This doesn't look very pretty, so it's best we get this into a calculator at this point you should obtain an angle of about 19.7 degrees. And if we look to our vectors on the plane, that looks pretty reasonable. To build on that, let's tackle a slightly more advanced example. In this triangle, we want to find the angle OBA. Let's call it alpha. From a glance, it's clear that this angle will have something to do with the angle between two vectors. My advice is to identify all vectors that you can in the problem before jumping into any formulas. We know that vector A forms the side OA of our triangle, vector B forms OB, and the side AB is formed by the vector from B to A, or the vector A minus B. That simple subtraction achieves this. We'll just label the vector C to avoid getting confused. There's an urge to now think that the angle OBA will be given by the angle between vectors B and C, but this angle is not between the two tails of the vectors, Remember, that was what the angle between two vectors was defined to be. The angle OBA is the angle between vector B's head and vector C's tail. How do we get around this? Instead, if you shifted vector B like this, the actual angle between vectors B and C is this. If we find this angle, we will then know angle OBA, because the angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So let's use our formula to find the angle between vectors b and c. Here is the dot product and the magnitudes of the vectors. You can double check them yourself for practice. Plugging this into a calculator, you will get a value of around 108.4 degrees. And so, to actually answer the question, given that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees, angle OBA is equal to 180 minus 108.4, which is 71.6 degrees. The way we just dealt with the angle between vectors was a little different to what we've seen, so make sure you're all good with that example. With plenty of dot products taken, let's sum up this content from today's video. Remember, we have two formulas for the dot product. We rearranged our geometric dot product formula into an expression for the angle between two vectors. We saw how questions surrounding this formula can vary, with those examples covering a good range of what you'll see. Our work with dot products has formed a key foundation for our vector knowledge, readying us to progress further through this topic. I'll see you in another video.